Russo taking a sabbatical. Matt Vaskersian in for the Mad Dog and joined by Ruben Amaro as uh, I, I guess it's not really time yet to talk about the trade deadline. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe I, it is. Why, why, yeah, it's never too early, I guess. How I, you doing, I, man? Good like seeing to, you. I, it's great to see you. I, I love trying to you know, do something proactively if I'm, if I'm yeah. a GM right now. Okay. Just trying to jump on things. So put on your GM hat for me here, uh, having done that job well for a long time. And you're the Milwaukee Brewers, right? David Stearns is a sharp guy. Yeah, They're sure. really sharp baseball ops people there. They've lost six in a row. They're still in first place in the NL Central. What would you be trying to uh, reconfigure if you could at the deadline with that team? Well, I know they, they have uh, Lorenzo Cain playing center field a lot, but I, I, to me, their, their offense is just sputtering. I yeah. think they need a little bit of a, a boost. I would love to get a guy like a Ketel Marte. I mean, he'd be a really interesting candidate for me. I know it's a long-term deal that he's under, but uh, to, to add to that center, a little pop. You know, Yelich is not swinging the bat necessarily as well as as you typically would, you know, have out of the guy. Right. And I, I'd love to have a guy like Marte. He's just so athletic. Um, give them a little bit of a spark. The, the offense is so light right now. Um, and he's, a, he's just a really good athlete. I think Arizona would be a weird trade partner right now because I don't know that we know what they think they, right. their timeline is, yeah, right? It's, it's, it's a very, they're in between. And actually, they play pretty good baseball. Yeah. They start off terrible. Um, and I've talked to a lot of scouts about, you know, what, what kind of club they had. And, and at the outset, I mean, it was, you know, all thumbs down. But they've, they've actually played pretty good baseball. Who else is out there as an outfielder, somebody that could play up the middle that the Brewers might be looking for? Well, Ian Happ might be a guy. I don't think they're going to do anything. Inter, and that's an, you know, interdivision yeah. type, type of a deal. Uh, maybe a guy like uh, Whit Merrifield. Okay. Um, I, I like him. He's a very good athlete as well. That hasn't played a ton of center field. But, um, you know, even a, a guy like Andrew Benatendi, who hasn't, again, has not played a ton of center field in the big leagues, but th he's a pretty good hitter. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's been swinging the bat. He's bounced back this year. I, you know, you just don't know in this day and age, and there, there's a, there's some guys out there that are that are going to be available, but um, but the prices are going to be steep. The later you go, prices are steeper and, and steeper. And probably, and correct me if I'm wrong, probably steeper still this year because with the expanded playoff format, you don't, you're not going to have clearly defined sellers or at least as many of them as we may have had in the past. That, and that's, that is the issue. I mean, supply and demand. I mean, yeah. it's basic supply and demand. And uh, it's going to be tough for, for guys to make trades. Trades are already difficult. <laughs> let, me, let me be the first to tell you. But um, but when you have you know certain only a number of teams to work with, man, it makes it tough. You still watch a ton of Phillies games. Uh, yep. I think you're always going to be kind of connected to that team, at least in the minds of a lot of fans. They're red hot right now. Yeah. Speaking of the Diamondbacks, they host the Diamondbacks and open a series today on the anniversary of a ridiculous game. What was it? Were, were you still running the club on that? That uh, I saw the note here. Hang on. Forgive me for not having yeah, it readily available. Right. Thirteen homers. On this date between the Phillies and the Diamondbacks a few years back, I think you might have been done by then. I, I, think, I don't think I was there for uh, that. I'll give you the date right now. I should remember that. It's ready for this uh, three years ago. Yeah, you were gone. Yeah, by I then. was gone. You, yeah, were, no, you were in the first base that. coaching box in Boston, weren't you? I was indeed. Uh, okay. Th three years ago, no, maybe I was in uh, New York. Man, I was the first base. Yeah. You've moved around a lot, dude. I mean, a lot, a lot of hats. <laughs> well, of let's, hats. let me hit you on the Phillies yeah. because they're hot. They're getting contributions from not only the guys they expect yeah. to get from because Bryce is red hot right now. So is Schwarber. But, you know, Veerling comes up from AAA, contributes. Bryce and Stott has been great for them. Terrific. What do you got on the Phils? I think, I think, you know, they're just getting an opportunity, giving these kids an opportunity to start to play. Um, I think they're playing a little bit of a looser game. Um, there was, like I said, those young kids, that, and, and the team doesn't have to rely on them because, as you said, Schwarber's been swinging the bat well, and obviously Bryce Harper's been just unbelievable. But um, but these guys are playing loose baseball. They're playing relaxed. They're having fun. Uh, they're doing things. I mean, and the starting pitching. I thought starting pitching was going to be a strength anyway, but it's also allowed their their bullpen to pitch much better and that's been a surprise over the last several days I mean their their their, their bullpen's been dealing and I think it's because now that they're going to have a little bit more defined roles and I think that's what you're going to see out of Rob Thompson as, yeah. a, as a guy in the sky and I, I want to ask you about that too because look what was going wrong in Philly wasn't all because of a manager no. what was going wrong in Anaheim certainly wasn't all because of a manager so those two teams make the tough decision a mid-season managerial change. It doesn't happen as frequently as it used to in our sport. Right. 
and and both teams go in different directions. The Angels haven't caught fire yet. The Phillies immediate from an executive standpoint. Talk about what goes through your mind when you make a call like that. It's awfully tough. Um, I, you know, I, I've had to go through it. In fact, I had to make a deal with uh, and, and, and make a move with Charlie Manuel, who I respected more than anybody in the game. Um, and that was very emotional for me. It was, it was tough. But, but sometimes, you know, your team doesn't line up with your manager and vice versa. And I think this is one of those situations, especially in Philadelphia, where you had expectations were really high. I mean, yeah. you're talking about $230 million payroll, et cetera, et cetera. And if you don't get out to a good start, and it's been a long time, that, that fan base is itching for, for a winner. Yeah. And, uh, and I think they just did not play great baseball. And, you know, they caught fire at the right time. And it's great, great for Rob Thompson, and it's great for the organization. But they really started swinging the bats much better. Uh, it was a really slow transition, and I think there's a lot of things involved in that as far as them them really bringing that offense out to where it is right now. And, and uh, I, I was, I'm kind of surprised that it took so long, but here they are, and they're swinging the bats. Let me give you an unrehearsed question here because I'm genuinely curious <laughs> your thoughts on this. Big lead for the Mets, bigger lead for the Yankees. Which New York team, if either <laughs> one of them, could be caught in their division this year? I just think that um, – I don't think the Yankees necessarily can be caught just because of the, the brand of baseball. Um, the, the only one thing that can get, can, can get them is is injury, mm -hmm. and you know, that, and that, you can Anybody. say that about yeah. within, when it, any team. Uh, the Mets just haven't they haven't gotten there. Now they've changed their culture dramatically with Buck Showalter. There's no question. But those guys have never really uh, most of them have other than maybe Scherzer and maybe Degrom one time have really played in meaningful games in September. And so it'll be interesting to see how they all kind of react to that. Interesting uh, for me, too. We, we a moment ago talked about the Red Sox, and we're going to talk to Brian O'Halloran here in a bit, being plus 5,000 to win the division, to topple the three teams that are ahead of them. The AL East has long been regarded as a tough division, yeah. but almost <laughs> soup to nuts. Out. Even Baltimore's playing better this year. Yeah. Is that the best division in the game for you? Wow, it's hard to say. I, I, I think it is. I think it was at the beginning, uh, and, and you thought that maybe the NL West was going to be jump would jump in there. Uh, San Francisco, San Francisco hasn't played as well, obviously, as they have la had last year. But um, I'll tell you what, uh, the AL East is always a beast, man. It, it's when, when I was coaching there. I mean, it was a knockdown drag out every single night. I got to believe, with Tampa Bay, with Toronto. I mean. Obviously, the Yanks and uh, and Boston, that, that has to be the still the most grueling division. I would imagine. I mean, and from a coaching standpoint, um, this year being the last year, the unbalanced schedule, right? Next year, the Yankees and Red Sox and Rays and Jays don't feed off each other. No. They don't beat each other up. Is that a good thing for a good division <laughs> to spread out and not have to play itself so much? I think it is. Yeah. I think it is. And I think it's great for baseball, too. I think it's a, it's a good thing. And... Uh, it, it will be interesting. I mean, the head-to-head -head battles in the AL East. I mean, you're talking about four-hour games almost every oh, night. It's it's a it is a grind. Um, but I, I, I got to tell you, um, I, it's nice to be able to spread things out a little bit. Uh, it's difficult to make up. And these the scheduling stuff's really tough. Yeah. But um, but I think it's a good thing. I think it's it'll I, be a good thing. I would agree with you. And we're going to talk to Brown O'Halloran about the uh, the Red Sox and the life they have, having win seven of eight as well. Ruben, thanks, man. Good seeing you. Great Appreciate you. you coming yeah. on. Uh, what are you on with uh, with BK and the lads? Uh, I, no, I, I, um, uh, Adnan and uh, Adnan. Adnan. Adnan me. filling in Adnan. for BK on. See, MLB I was going to ask him about how how to pronounce his name. You should do that. But I didn't know that. You should you should do that. Well, we'll go. I'll go up there and tell him. <laughs> Adnan. <laughs>